Let's go back to our top story this hour. The Palestinian Red Crescent says that Israeli forces have targeted Al Amal Hospital in the southern city of Khan Yunis with artillery shelling. Let's go live now to Rafa in the south of Gaza. Our correspondent there is Nizar Sadawi. Um, Nizar, I mean, you, you can tell us a bit more about what you know about this shelling, but, but first of all, I would like to t ask you a slightly bigger picture question because we're talking about, once again, an attack by Israeli forces on a, on a hospital. Uh, this time we're talking about shelling. You previously told us about sniper attacks. Yesterday I interviewed a surgeon, a British surgeon, who, who's been on and off for several years in Gaza. He was there just uh, a few weeks ago. And I asked him, because this is the motivation that Israel says it has for, for any attacks on the hospital, is it says that Hamas militants are embedded in there. Uh, he told me he's never seen anything like that. He also said of his network of fellow um, uh, medics that none of them have ever reported seeing uh, any Hamas militants embedded in hospitals. And as our man on the ground, I'd like to know, what have you seen and what have you heard? Do, do you believe there is any substance to the Israel motivation and claims that Hamas are in the hospitals and that's why they're attacking? If that's the case, maybe they can make some kind of argument. If it isn't the case, it looks like something much more sinister. So what's your experience? Jerusalem, Mohammed al Qasim is our correspondent there. Um, welcome to you, Mohammed. Now, the United States says that it's going to build a port on the Gaza coast. Um, the EU seems quite thrilled with its plans to bring in aid by uh, ships. It's also been said that Israel is going to be involved in the security aspects of these operations. Um, I mean, you can tell us a bit more about whether you think those are going to be effective and if they're going, going to be enough. Uh, maybe I'm being naive here, but I would also like to ask you, because it seems like the obvious thing to me, if Israel is going to be involved, why doesn't Israel just let more trucks in by land? Because there were enough trucks originally, weren't there? And then they, as I understood, it's Israel that's stopping the aid coming in by land. You're not being naive, Neil. In fact, this is the logical and rational uh, response. And this is the legitimate question to be asked. Osama, I want to talk about the civilian deaths again, because there will be people watching at home, some of them may sympathise with Israel, some of them may sympathise with Palestinians, some may sympathise with Hamas. But what I think unites most people around the world is the loss of innocent life, that people can think, that could be me. Those people have done nothing wrong. Many of them are so young they don't even understand what, what's going on. So many innocent deaths we've seen, and the concern is, what do you think might happen if there is an Israeli ground offensive? Because so far, the Israeli military, whatever they say, seem to have shown no regard whatsoever for civilian life. Well, what's the worst case scenario? OK, let's get more on this story now from Associate Professor at the European University, George Michelisvili, joins me live on the line from Tbilisi. Welcome to you. So there have been many credible claims of interference in Russian elections in the past. And already in this one, we, we just heard there the uh, expulsion of Boris Nadezhdin. He was disqualified from, from running as a candidate. And he was, he was gathering some credible support. But at the same time, you have what I believe to be a reputable uh, pollster like the Levada Center that consistently says that the numbers show that Vladimir Putin has the support to win an election anyway. So if, if the Kremlin could win this legitimately, according to the polls, why the need to interfere with elections? Okay, uh, good evening. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, yes, the um, the reason is because Putin wants landslide uh, victory. This change of perception of Prabowo, he's, he's changed the way that he's he's seen, and many of the younger voters might not have seen the way that he was coming across in previous elections. So that's something that maybe is to his benefit. Um, he's also brought in the outgoing president, Joko Widodo's son, on the ticket with him. Is this a masterclass in rebranding that, that we're seeing here? I'm, I'm being slightly cynical, but this is politics. Is it just a total rebrand? It's the same man, just repackaged. Absolutely. So I think they're doing everything they can um, within um, the, the law. Let's bring in Daniel Lewis Foote. It's a former US special envoy to Haiti, and he joins me from Buffalo, New York. Uh, welcome to you, sir. Ari Longree. Um, will he step down, do you think, as the gangs want? Haiti has gotten exponentially worse in the last two and a half years because the U.S. puppet, Dr. Ariel Henry, has done nothing to, to stem the, the terrible situation. You said there um, you called Henry a U.S. puppet. I've spoken to previous guests who said that, you know, the, the U.S. had a big hand in creating this situation. Um, is the U.S. responsible for, for trying to clean this mess up? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. This is their mess. They need to sweep this up. As special envoy, I advise them strongly against backing Ariel Henry. And I quit my profession as a diplomat to protest that and to try to undo that. And I continue to do that. Caribbean nation of Haiti has descended into a state of near anarchy. Regional countries and the US are pushing for a solution, but should Haiti just be left to find its own way? Haiti became only the second independent state in the Western hemisphere behind the US in 1804, after rebel slaves defeated their French colonial rulers. But it's had a long, and painful history of foreign interference and state corruption since then. I'm Neil Harvey, and today's newsmaker is Haiti. One problem that's been there, the accusation, it's been there for decades, is, is corruption. It's an accusation that's also been made by the G9 gang leader, Jimmy Cherizier, who says that Haiti's politicians are corrupt, that they don't invest money in the social services, and that they, they don't invest in infrastructure. Um, you, as a politician yourself, what have you seen? Is that a correct assessment? Is there a problem with corruption in the country? Uh, it's a, it's a very difficult to <laughs> to uh, comment on a gang leader's uh, assessment. But it's not just Jimmy Cherizier who said that. That because, accusation's been made for uh, decades. Uh, when you when they struggle for power, and which is what we have now, we choose as Asian leaders to use uh, force. I respect your answer, Matthias, but, but I have today. to insist. I feel like you avoided the question there. I mean, it's kind of yes or no. Do you feel there has been a problem with corruption? Certainly, it's a, the corruption is a huge problem. You can look at the list of people that has been sanctioned by the international community for the past, uh, I, I would say, 20 years. Uh, there's a lot of accusation. There's a lot of problem of corruption. 